This is a good day for Minnesota, for hardworking Minnesotans, and for a brighter economic future throughout our state. Uh, today, uh, we do have an agreement on a strong minimum wage at $9.50 an hour, uh, which is a victory for, for Minnesotans. So the minimum wage will increase to $9.50. Uh, that will raise the wages of 350,000 Minnesotans. Uh, we've agreed to do it in a responsible uh, manner so that the uh, wage will increase and not lose its value into the future uh, so that uh, workers don't uh, fall behind as the cost of living of their groceries and their gas and other basic expenses increase over the years. The, the Senate had, had expressed some reservations uh, about the idea of going to 950 over too short a period of time, about automatic inflation increases going forward, and members of the Senate had some concern about how this was going to impact uh, teenage workers just trying to get uh, their way into uh, the workforce, uh, and the same true for uh, a, a training wage that we have under current law. I, and I just want to thank the House for being responsive to those things, uh, the Senate's concerns. The final deal uh, does go to 950 over a three-year period uh, rather than two, which is what I think people had been uh, anticipating. Uh, it has a provision in it that allows the Commissioner of Labor and Industry uh, to suspend a potential increase in the event of an economic downturn. And there are uh, a number of uh, criteria that the Commissioner will look at when they make a decision about whether to poten potentially suspend the increase, things like uh, GDP growth, consumer confidence index, unemployment rate, uh, all are things that uh, the Commissioner will consider when making a decision whether a suspension uh, of the inflation index is in order. It's a basic Minnesota value that hard work is what sh it should take to support yourself and to improve your life. By raising the minimum wage, we begin to make Minnesota's economy better reflect that core value that work matters and that all Minnesotans deserve the dignity of supporting themselves through work. I don't think it's going to have an impact on uh, how many Big Macs McDonald's is going to sell. Uh, people are either going to buy one uh, or they're not. And I think uh, Representative Winkler is right. Putting more money in the hands of people doing the purchasing businesses will benefit from Would that. Would you expect small businesses to close in rural areas especially? Uh, no, I think the increase for small businesses is pretty modest. Uh, going to 775 over a, a three-year period I think is manageable for them. As I know that a lot of people that I represent and a lot of people I work with, um, you know, the last week of the month they're out of money. They're trying to figure out how to make ends meet. They're trying to figure out how to get through. I got another bill on payday lending reform that kind of gets at that issue. And so we think that raising uh, the wage, that puts more money in people's pocket and that they are going to then spend those dollars. They're not saving them at that level, right? They're not saving them. They don't have a, a, a annuity portfolio or any of those kind of things that people have when they are making more than what they uh, than what they consume. So I do think that personally, as well as I think there's a lot of research that suggests that people are, that, that make that are at the minimum wage are going to put that directly back into the economy. Mr. Speaker, uh, Doug asked if the state office building and this are linked, are they? No, I think Tom summed it up perfectly well. The Senate wanted the state office building. The House was pushing on an indexed minimum wage, and you're saying the two aren't linked even though they happened within 72 hours of each other? Right. I mean, I, we had this bucket of issues coming into session, and, and Aaron can run through you with you once again the long process we went through. Uh, on the state office building, if you want, um, but uh, you know we got the, the the timing of the information that we got back from the administration on the state office building is what it is. And uh, since I'm here, I just also wanted to personally recognize Cher Knudsen, Peggy Flanagan, and Brian Rushi, who are the co-chairs of the Minimum Wage Coalition. And just a, this isn't in response to you, Pat, but. Uh, without the engagement of Minnesotans around the state, without these leaders of labor, faith, and nonprofit, I don't see that we would be here today. And I think uh, this is a little bit like the um, other issues that we face at the Capitol. When Minnesotans speak with a strong voice and they have strong leadership in the community, good things happen here. And as is often the case, the legislature responds to the demands of citizens, and I think this is a perfect example of that through their leadership. Do you expect any backlash from the voters? About the minimum wage increase? Yes. Uh, a positive one. <laughs> Thank you.